Welcome to KYD. In this video, we're talking all about Tobel RV tires. I just got back from Discount Tire where we replaced our tires on our 30 foot Flying Cloud Airstream and we moved, uh, upgraded our wheels from a 15 inch wheel to a 16 inch wheel. Uh, we're just about to hit the road for several months and so I wanted to do this before we left. But what a great opportunity to talk about tire safety, talk about proper inflation, proper maintenance on your tires, what to look for to avoid a blowout. I also wanted to cover things like the difference between an ST, a special trailer tire, and a LT tire, which is a light truck tire. Um, plus some best practices for when you're actually going down to the tire shop and getting your tires or wheels replaced. So lots to cover in this video. Let's get started. This video is specifically about towable RVs. A class A tire is a different animal altogether. Uh, we did replace the tires of our 1984 Bluebird Wander Lodge. Uh, and I did have a chance to catch up with Eric from Techno RV that had a front tire blowout in his class A. And I'll link that episode right there where he talks about some of the things he learned uh, in the process of getting a blowout. Also, it's important for any RV owner to really understand this information for yourself. So uh, take a video like this as uh, a way to consider certain ideas so that you can further investigate and really understand them to make the decision that's right for you, the RV that you're towing, where you're going, how you're storing it. We're gonna get into all of that. Um, Goodyear actually has a great blog about tire safety that I'll link right, well, I'll link it up there and then I'll also put the URL right here. Uh, and there's just a lot of great information about maintenance and inflation and everything you should know. So that was a long way of saying, take ownership of understanding tires for your towable RV because it's probably the most important thing in the entire setup as it relates to safety and RV safety. Okay, now let's talk about stuff that you should look for in your tire to make sure that it's in good condition to hit the road. Um, before you go on any trip, especially a long one, you wanna do a, a thorough inspection of the tire. Stuff to look for. Cracking on the sidewall is a big indication that you need to get the tire looked at by a professional or replace. Uh, equally important is the uh, uneven wear on the tire. Uh, we're gonna talk about proper inflation in this video, but if you're overinflated to the load, you're gonna be running on the center of your tire and it could be wearing there. If you're under inflated, it will be riding on the sidewalls of the tire, which is terrible because that generates more heat. Heat kills a tire and it creates a blowout. So you'll be riding on the sidewalls and you'll get uneven wear there. If you have an axle problem or if you have a bearing issue, you'll notice that there's uneven wear on the tire. So uneven wear is a, is, is a great indicator to see that maybe you have a bigger problem you need to look at or if you're not running the proper inflation. So look for cracks, look for uneven wear. Um, anything that you think is peculiar, uh, just pop into a tire shop and have them check it out and see if you need to get that tire replaced before you get going. Another big question is when is it time to go ahead and replace the tire? Well, the first thing you gotta do is uh, find the DOT date stamp on the tire. It's a four digit number. It's, it's, it's kind of weird how it, it reads, but when you look on the side of your tire and you find the DOT stamp, you'll notice a four digit number. The first two digits is the week that uh, that tire was manufactured, and the second two is the last two digits of the year. So in this case, it is looks like 0919, so the ninth week of 2019. I contacted Zach, who was the previous owner of this RV. I said, hey, when did you put these Goodyear Endurance tires on? He said, March 23rd of 2019. He actually showed me a picture. And that was consistent with the date stamp on the tire. So these tires are just a little over three years old. And as you can tell, they're in great condition. There's no track, there's no cracking whatsoever. The, the, the wear, there's no uneven wear on the tire. And um, in many ways, I'm probably replacing this tire based upon how it looks a little too soon. But I also know that we're about to hit the road for several months and this is not something I wanna do while we're on the road. And so I just wanna go ahead and take care of it now while we have the time. Plus I'm making the upgrade from the 15 inch rim to a 16 inch rim, which will give me just a little bit more clearance. So for those reasons, I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. The biggest factor in terms of when it's time to replace the tire has a lot to do with how you've been maintaining the tire and storage. Uh, we once had a boat, we put brand new tires on the trailer, uh, we parked it out for the summer in Arizona, and four months later, the tires were completely shot. Because when a tire is not in use, it is critical that they are covered from the sun, or the sun will, will dry out the tire and you'll go one mile and, and they'll just disintegrate. Yet, these tires, three years old, have never 
been covered up. As you can tell, they're in great condition. And the reason is we're using this RV all the time. And when you're towing your RV, it re regenerates the rubber compound inside the tire and it keeps them fresh. Much, uh, think of it like a dough. If you're kneading the dough, it stays great. The moment you stop kneading it and leave it out, it starts to get dry and hard. And the same is true for tires. Uh, Trish and I see all the time people covering up their tires at a campground. Um, that might provide good peace of mind, but it's just not necessary if you're using the tires. When you're storing your RV and you're not going to be towing it, it is critical that they are protected from the sun. You can either get a board to protect them or you can actually buy something to put over the tires. But if you're not using your RV, you've got to protect them from the sun. And it's important that you have the proper PSI in that tire when you're storing it so that you don't get any flat spots. Uh, I'm still actually hooked up. We just got back from Mesa Verde last night. I knew that today was tire day, so I'm still hooked up. Uh, now let's pop down to discount tire and get these replaced. And on the way, I wanna talk about the difference between ST and LT tires. Okay, we're just about ready to go down to discount tire, but there's just a couple things I wanted to mention. The first is selecting the right tire shop. Now there's two discount tires in Flagstaff, and one is just a little bit more suitable for changing an RV tire than the other, and so I've selected that one. As you're traveling across the country, it might not be a bad idea to A, call in advance, make sure that they even replace RV tires, and second, get a satellite view to see how you're gonna maneuver around that parking lot so you don't end up damaging your RV. The other thing, if you have a new RV, new to you, or if you're just getting started, it's a great idea to do a mock tire change at home. This way you'll make sure you have the proper four-way wrench or a lug nut wrench. Uh, make sure that you have the proper uh, jack so that you can get your RV up off the ground. Every RV I learned is just a little peculiar when it comes to changing a tire. Maybe your RV sits so high up off the ground that your jack's not gonna work. And in that case, you can go to Harbor Freight, get a bottle jack. Um, whatever the case is for your RV, I'm confident you're gonna be glad you knew in your driveway than on the side of the road. Okay, when it comes to towable RV tires, there are two things that seem to have a lot of debate, maybe some disagreement. How to properly inflate your tire, shockingly. And the second is ST versus LT. So let's talk about that first. All right, let's start with what ST and LT stands for. ST stands for special trailer. And LT stands for light truck. Now, I can't put this any more blunt than prior to the Goodyear Endurance tire, ST tires sucked. They only went up to about 65 miles per hour and there were all sorts of problems within those tires. So there's a lot of old timers and a lot of people RVing for a long time that switched to LT a long time ago and as a result, they swear by it. But then about, I think about six years ago, the Goodyear Endurance tire comes out. This is an ST tire, goes up to 87 mile per hour speed rated and it has a lot of the, it, it solved a lot of the problems I believe that gave ST tires a bad rap. Now, this truck has 72,000 miles on it. I would speculate about half of those miles have been towing this RV with 15 inch E-rated Goodyear Endurance tires with zero problems. Anyway, I did some research and really dove in deep on what is the difference between ST and LT and what is the, the, the proper tire to use. If you talk to the tire manufacturers, specifically like let's say Goodyear, they're gonna say without question, if you're towing an RV, you should be using ST tires. Uh, ST tires, are designed to mitigate heat, which is critical. Stiffer sidewall for turning. You probably notice if you're backing in really tight, you might see on a double axle trailer, you might see those tires flexing a little bit. Um, and they have a tread pattern designed for towing. Whereas an LT tire is really designed for cornering, turning, steering, accelerating, things that your trailer isn't really going to be doing. Now what makes things ultra confusing is that Airstream puts the LT Michelin tire on their trailers right out of the factory. So I think a lot of people think, hey, if that's what Airstream's doing, then that's the better tire. And so I was wondering, you know, why might Airstream do that? And the only thing I can come up with is because of the different models that they have on the Airstream. A, um, they only make one type of trailer. I think the biggest trailer they make now is a 33 foot classic. And so they know that that LT tire is gonna fit the payload to their entire line. And I could also speculate that maybe based upon the size of the wheel well, 
that an LT tire has a slightly smaller form factor, and so that's a suitable tire for them. Yet, if you wanna put a Michelin tire on your towable RV, there are some discount tires that say, no, we won't do it. We're not gonna put an LT tire on a towable RV. So you might have to find a tire shop that's going to go outside of the parameters of an ST. Does that have a reader? Yeah, it scans the tread depths. Oh, it does? Sweet, yeah. What's the tread depth of this? Uh, one. <laughs> they're, they're pretty bad on the, oh, really? on the inside edge. Okay, yeah. so it is time. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. This one's okay. starting to this one's starting to separate from itself. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, I didn't even see that. Yeah. Okay, we're set up here waiting for my turn. Um, if you've been watching since what we call the first flat tire, and you're paying very close attention, this is actually the discount that we went to. And in that moment, I was so enamored with RV life that we could be changing a tire and eating a sandwich at the same time. But I must say, what? to pull in to a discount tire, and for me to go in and get a new tire, and for you to make food. It's nice. That's nice. Yeah, sure. All right. Yeah, those are big, aren't they? Very. <laughs> the, the, yeah, I mean, yeah. not only will I not be able to put the X-Shocks there, but I don't even think... I... You wouldn't have enough clearance to move, um, like if, if that, because the X-Shock has to have some movement. Um, rule of thumb with trailers is you want to have at least two inches different, or okay. two inches in separation. Okay. Um, and that would, that's definitely going to rub. Okay, so that's why Michelin most likely uses the, or that's why Airstream uses Michelin for the 16-inch rim. Right. But why Endurance works on a 15. Yep. Yep. All right. Definitely. And you said you got the Michelin in stock? I do. There you go. It's going up. Oh. No, that's as high as it goes. Okay. All right. You both it is. Yeah. <laughs> There are so many RVs now that sit so high up off the ground that a floor jack won't reach the frame. And the next best place is the axle. And if you just happen to get a tire technician, uh, likely not a discount, but just somewhere where they don't know how to properly raise an RV, they could put that floor jack right in the middle of your axle thinking, hey, I'll just put it right here and lift up the whole RV. That's a great way to bend your axle. So where the jack goes is important and if it doesn't reach the frame, the next best place is as like under the U-bolts, as close to the wheel on the axle as possible. Now, in the case of an Airstream, there are actual jack points. But here's a common mistake. The jack point placard, the label, it says jack and it has an arrow pointing to the actual jack point. If you don't look carefully, that label could look like the jack point. And if you put the jack directly under the label, you'll crush the RV because that's it's not supported in that area. So it's important in an Airstream to put the jack in the right spot. Any RV, if you can't get it in the correct spot, put it on the axle, but put it under the U-bolts. And I think it's important to just be there for that process so that you don't come out and find out that there is an issue. Well, that didn't take long. So these are the Michelins? Those are the Michelins. And what size were these? 225, 75, 16. All right. And those look like they fit? Yeah. Yeah much better yeah yeah because you definitely you, you need at least at least two inches in separation from the front and the rears okay that way the axles have more movement to move, or have a little bit of room to sure move. yeah so yeah right. i'll have these guys get this going uh, okay. what do you want to do with your old bugs So this is something I didn't really anticipate. New covers. They didn't come with the rims. I talked to Connor about it. He says sometimes they come, sometimes they don't come. 
He says, but it's not specific to Sendell. You can get these at Tractor Supply in different places like that. But I wish I would have known because I would have got nice new pretty ones. I at least said, hey, can I go wash them real quick? Because I'll never, I'll never have them quite this accessible. And they're like, yeah, no problem. This discount is extremely competent and accommodating, which I appreciate. And that's not a KYD thing, by the way. That's a discount tire thing. This is Jesse. He's Caleb's friend. Works Hello. At discount. Real quick, let's talk about having a TPMS system. I, I, I'll be as straightforward as I can. A TPMS system is completely unnecessary, but let me tell you why I have one and why so many people do. Very few people are gonna check the PSI of their tires with the frequency that's required to be safe. So to make it easy and convenient, you can use a TPMS system where you get in your truck, I turn it on, I can look down, I know I'm good. The advantage of a TPMS system is that you can look down and you can say, hey, I got uh, one tire at 67, 67, 67, 85, you can spot a problem right away. And that's the big benefit. The same with temperature. To click the button at the top, it, switch over, it switches over to Fahrenheit, and you can look and you can say, hey, look, I got three tires at, at, at 95, and I got one tire at 110, I might have a problem with that tire. And you can pull over and prevent a blowout by taking care of it. So being able to get early indicators of a tire problem is the big advantage of an S, uh, a TPMS system. Uh, and then of course, the other is just convenience so that you're not down here every morning checking when you're cold. So I've been working with Connor here and I asked Connor, hey, if I were to bring in like a car, a vehicle, what would you inflate those tires to? And he said, well, we would inflate them to the suggested PSI on the inside of the door jam. And I said, and an RV? And he goes, well, a lot of times RVs don't have that placard and many times they're running out at their max capacity. So we go max cold on the tire. But in this case, the Airstream does have a placard. It does have a suggested PSI that we should inflate the tires to based upon the GVWR of this trailer. So this trailer has a GVWR of 8,800 pounds and it suggests an E-rated tire be inflated to 65 PSI. So I told my tire technician to inflate to 67. That's just what I run them at. Um, his response was, well, hey, you know they go to 80. And I go, yeah, but let's just run them at 67. And he said, cool. Yeah, the, the 16 is really good. The tires are on and the wheels. I think it looks terrific. I think it was a big upgrade and I'll certainly be sharing with you if I can tell any difference towing an LT tire and of course the condition of the RV when I come back and open up the door because there's stuff everywhere. And and, and really uh, that's, that's a great lead in to talking about proper inflation because that is why I inflate the tires based upon the load because I'm trying to reduce the wear and tear of the RV by getting the en enough cushion in that tire so it's a smooth ride for the RV but also having the required payload to haul almost 9,000 pounds. That's where all the controversy comes from when it comes to inflation. There are, different, there are two different types of opinions. Uh, the tire says on these tires now the max PSI cold is 90 and so that's why you know the technician went right up to 90 PSI. The problem with that is it, at 90 PSI it's gonna makes it's gonna create so much rigidity um, on the and stress on the trailer for for payload that I really don't need. You know, the, if I look at the load inflation table, 65 for this particular RV, 65 is going to give it the payload it needs to carry the load, but it's gonna make it a smooth ride. Same with the truck. I could take the truck all the way to max cold. And in five blocks, I would be able to tell how rigid it is. And you hit a speed bump and it go bang, or you hit a pothole, and it's just, it'd just be hard on you to drive. So we lower the PSI to create a comfortable ride, but not too low so that we can, you know, so the tire can manage the payload. And um, in my opinion, and, and the opinion of, uh, I've, I've talked to Goodyear and other companies, uh, tire manufacturers, um, that is how they suggest inflating your tire. Now, when would you go max cold? I suppose if you didn't know the weight on the tire, you would go max cold because you wouldn't want to take any chances. Uh, you'd want to have the maximum payload of that tire. But it's pretty easy to find out if you don't have a placard on the side of your RV. Uh, pull into a cat scale. I love going through the cat scale because I pull up and I go, I shot this sugar, 
and I say, um, no. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like, no truck number private. They're like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like, okay, great, I'll see you inside. That's how that conversation normally goes. There's your steer axle, which is the front weight pad. And then there's your drive axle, that's the middle. And then there's your trailer axle, and that's what the trailer goes on. And it'll give you a readout of how much weight is on each of these pads. So you can take your, your trailer axle weight, divide by four, if it's a double axle trailer, four tires, and that'll give you kind of a rough estimate of how much weight is on that tire. I say rough estimate because in our case, our refrigerator is right here, so there might be more weight on this side of the RV than the other, but generally speaking, I'd have a pretty good idea of how much weight is on that tire. And then in the case of Goodyear or Michelin, I would pull up their load inflation table, I'd look at how much weight, and I would look at the proper PSI, and I'd be good to go. So that's what you can do to get, um, to make sure that your, your inflation can handle the payload, but also provide the comfort that you want, uh, or in the case of towing, um, not, put, not putting too much stress on the trailer. Um, a couple myths that I wanna talk about when it comes to inflation. Max cold does not mean the maximum amount of pressure that that tire can handle. There's some people I've seen on the, the Facebook groups and other places where they'll say things like, my max PSI is 80, so I inflate to 70 so that when the, when, because I live in Arizona and it's so hot that when that tire increases in temperature and therefore increases in PSI, that I've got room to not exceed that number. That's not what they mean by max cold. Max cold is the max amount of pressure before you start towing, ideally taken in the morning. The tire is actually capable of going way beyond that max maximum PSI number as the tire heats up. So if you need the payload of max cold, and let's just say hypothetically that's 80, you would inflate to 80, and then as the tire heats up from the road, it would go beyond that. And as we said before, if you have a TPMS system and you've got you know, three tires at 80 and you got one at 100, that's an indicator that you've got a problem. Same with temperature. So uh, I hope that helped a little bit in terms of um, understanding how to properly inflate based upon load or max PSI. Um, pretty easy to figure out to get the right load. And, um, and it's also very important to always be checking your PSI. And that's where the TPMS system comes in so handy. It's the TPMS system that I like because I can see all four numbers, these are inaccurate right now, but all four numbers on one screen. And then when you click that button on the top, it switches over to temperature. Same thing, I can look at all four. When we had a class A pulling a, a tow vehicle, um, I would actually put all six tires of the bus and I had the four tires of the tow vehicle all at the bottom. So I had all 10 tires on one screen, which I really like. So um, I'll link down below to this TPMS system, the uh, i10, it's a great device. Oh, we forgot to talk about money. How much all this costs. Not an inexpensive day. Let's just run through some numbers real quick. The Sendell tires were 125 a piece. So that was 500 total. I actually ordered one more for the spare and I'm gonna come back down here and pick it up. The Michelin tires are a little bit more expensive than the Goodyear Endurance. The Goodyear Endurance on a 15 inch rim is I, I think a great price somewhere around $140. The Michelin tire uh, LT is $262, so it's $1,048. Built today was $2,084, but it gets worse. The truck's got 72,413 miles on it. I think it's incredible that I have driven 72,000 miles on these Michelin tires, but I talked to Connor and he said the rears are past due and the fronts are just about to be due. So. I'm coming down here in two weeks <laughs> to get the fifth tire on the Airstream so we've got a proper 16 inch spare and replace all the tires of the truck. Um, but uh, that's all right, it'll give me another 72,000 miles, which I think is which is pretty good. Uh, other than that, if you're new around here, we release a, a new video every Sunday at seven. If you thought this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, join. Uh, the video we like to make every Sunday is of traveling in our RV. And this season we're gonna be, uh, what we're gonna be doing what we're calling the National Park Blitz, going up the West Coast, uh, Capitol Reef. We're gonna go through the backside of the Tetons, uh, Mount Rainier, Olympic National Park, 
Northern Cascades, down to Mount Rushmore. So lots of great destination ideas if you're looking to get an RV and learn along the way and um, get some ideas of places to go. Subscribe, we'd love to have you. Other than that, I'm gonna go show Trish these tires and um, we'll catch you next Sunday. Bye for now. Hi. Hello. How's it going? Good. You big, wanna come on? You wanna, big day? Big day, you wanna come out and see these tires? Yeah. And wheels? New shoes? New shoes, what are you making? Um, These are gluten-free crusts. I'm just making a couple gluten-free pizzas for Caleb. All right, come okay, on out. Be right there. Hey, you wanna go see the new tires? And wheels. Wheels. You got new rims? Yeah. Those are so pretty. Aren't they? And the big ones fit? Uh, no, we had to go LT Michelin's. Really? Yeah, we did because the Goodyear's were too big. They were like literally touching. Wow, they're so pretty. Aren't they better looking? The rim itself? It smells so good. It, <laughs> it does smell so good. good. It does so good. Here we go. Yep. So, definitely smaller, but they fit. 